Hey everyone, Cavs here. I love martial arts films. For pretty much all my life, I've unconsciously lumped all martial arts films into one category. Kung Fu films. Even if the style is not even Kung Fu. However, upon further research and discovery, I learned I tend to gravitate to a particular genre of martial arts film. And that genre is Wuxia. Wuxia is a genre of fiction concerning the adventures of martial arts in ancient China and translates to martial arts and chivalry. I was surprised by the amount of Wuxia films that I had experienced over the years. Films such as House of Flying Daggers, Hero, Redcliffe, and Big Trouble in Little China, just to name a few. Yes, you heard me right. Even Big Trouble in Little China is a wuxia film. I was surprised by how many movies and films I've consumed and didn't even know until now are actually wuxia, which is a great feeling. So with so much great content and subgenres of wuxia I've yet to explore, I want to discuss one of my favorite wuxia films from one of the world's greatest directors, Zhang Yimao. The name of this classic film is Curse of the Golden Flower. What if I told you this film was full of action, revenge, tragic love, kept chock full of plot twists, displays great cinematography, rich character development, masterful pacing, and production design? Would you still be interested? In this video, I want to show a few scenes of this awesome movie that still stick out in my mind. Scenes full of quality acting. A film that displays an empress and her tragic attempt to start a rebellion. Played by the powerful, versatile, and exquisite Gung Li. A film that showcases the cold, ruthless efficiency and apathetic might of the Emperor Ping played by the incredible Chu Yun Fong. But before that, let me give you a quick rundown of this story, which was written, written by Zhong Yi Mao, and it was inspired by the works of Xiao Yu's 1933 play, Thunderstorm, as well as William Shakespeare's Hamlet. The year is 928 AD. The cruel Emperor Ping wishes to maintain order and peace at all costs. Emperor Ping loathes his wife, the Empress Phoenix, so much that he's been telling her she has anemia. The Imperial Doctor and the Emperor have conspired and been in charge of distributing Empress Phoenix medicine, which reality is poison. The Empress has been taking this medicine daily for many years which is not only not curing her, the medicine is in fact killing her. Oh yeah, and driving her insane. The Empress has also been having an affair. The Empress' first son, the Crown Prince Wan, played by Lu Ye. Prince Wan has been sleeping with the Imperial Doctor's daughter, Zhong Chen, played by Li Mai. The same doctor and daughter duo that's been poisoning the Empress. Prince Jay, played by Jay Cho, has returned from the war front to attend the Double Ninth Festival. Now, those who don't know, um, the Double Ninth Festival is a traditional Chinese festival dating back to the Warring States period, in which the ninth day of the ninth month is a lunar month and an auspicious event. The events include hiking feasting, and drinking chrysanthemum wine on this day. Okay, back to, back to the movie. The emperor reminds his son that you are privy to anything within the empire. However, you must remember to never take what I do not give you. A warning and foreshadowing of what is to come. The empress 
has been stitching beautiful silk embroidered scarves with a golden chrysanthemum flower. Prince Jai notices his mother seems more ill than when he last saw her. Noticing all the scarves, Prince Jai curiously asks, What the hell's going on? The Empress tells her son that the Emperor has been poisoning her. She has verified this evidence from a spy, played by Jun Chen, a spy who is also the mother of Zheng Chen, which we find out later. Mrs. Zhang has a secret of her own and has been stalking the Crown Prince Wan to the point he catches her in the act and decides to chase her. Prince Wan's men capture the spy and bring her to the Emperor. When her face mask is pulled off, it is revealed to be Mrs. Zhang, the Emperor's former lover. Mrs. Zhang has a noticeable facial brand scar for when the Emperor did to her. Prince Wan notices that when Mrs. Zhang is unmasked, the Emperor, his father, flinched in shock and fear. Two emotions he has never seen from him. His eyes also dart back to Mrs. Zhang as he tries to piece together what is the importance of this woman to his father. The Emperor tells Prince Wan and everyone else except for Mrs. Zhang to leave his sight immediately. And through their discussions together, Emperor Ping and Miss Jiang were both not only lovers, but had a kid. And the Emperor, who once was a lowly ambitious captain, destroyed Mrs. Jiang's family and locked her up to conceal his shame when he became Emperor. Miss Jiang, beaten, homeless, and without a family, passes out due to her injuries while on the run. She was found and taken in by the Imperial Doctor. From this act of kindness, she falls in love and marries the doctor. This is all 25 years ago before the events today, so this is just a recap of that. Meanwhile, the Emperor storms into Prince Wan's chambers, where he and Chung Jan have just finished doing the dirty. Prince Wan attempts to hide his lover in the bed, but fails miserably. The Empress, aware of Chang Jan's presence, state that the punishment for being in an unsanctioned relationship with the Crown Prince is 19 lashings, a facial brand, and exile from the Empire forever. Are you starting to see things click? The Prince begs the Empress to please let this matter slide and gets on his hand and knees. Behavior quite unbecoming of the future Emperor. The Empress agrees and instead decides to exile Chang Jan. When Prince Wan visits Chang Jan to say goodbye, Chang Jan tells Prince Wan that the Empress has been weaving 10,000 scarves upon learning. 10,000 scarves. Upon learning this fact, Prince Wan approaches the Empress for an explanation. The Empress, undeterred and unafraid, comes clean that she's indeed planning in a rebellion. Prince Wan pleads that if she carries on with this plan, the Empire will think he was the one behind it all, and it would more than likely be a death sentence for him. Prince Wan asks the Empress, Do you even wish me dead? Now, this is Gong Li, so she's acting her ass off, so she puts all the facts together, right? The Prince no longer loves her. He's actually been stripping another woman. That same woman has been working with the Imperial Doctor to poison her. This woman has also told Prince Wan about her rebellious plans and deeds. On top of the fact that she knows that her natural born son, Prince Jai, will be a stronger, better ruler if made emperor. With all the facts in front of her, the Empress turns around, and tells Prince Wan to his face, Yes, I wish you were dead. Now for his valiant service to the Empire, the Emperor gives the Imperial Doctor the title of Governor of Suzhou, and he and his family will live out their days there. The Imperial Doctor tells the Emperor he has supplied a few months of medicine for the Empress, so the Emperor will not need to worry. 
The Imperial Doctor departs with his family. However, Chong Jian has run back to the capital to plead with the Emperor. That is when the Emperor summons his assassins to kill not only the newly minted governor of Suzhou, but also Mrs. Zhang and anyone accompanying the governor. As the governor and Mrs. Zhang flee, assassins pursue them relentlessly. The governor, realizing he can buy his wife a little more time, jumps from the back of his wife's steed and attempts to hold back the pursuing assassins. As Mrs. Zhang looks back at her husband's last valiant stand, she presses on and is saved by the Empress Royal Guard. Zhang Chen realizes after waiting for what seems to be hours, is assaulted by the Emperor's assassins. She fights off a few, but is captured, and just before they strike the final blow, Miss Zhang, her mom, leaps into battle and stops the assassin's blade from striking. She kills the remaining assassins and, together with her daughter, attempts to flee the capital. Suddenly, the Emperor's advisor calmly stops the pair and requests that the Emperor and Empress now hear their plea of leniency. So it's terrifying, it's sad, it's tragic, but that's why I love this movie. Um, there's so many things why I love about this movie. Um, it's so dense in terms of the themes, um, the developments, just everything within this film is just jam-packed and it blazes by in about 114 minutes. Now the budget of this film was 45 million and it grossed back 78 million. What I also love about the final moments within this film is that Prince Chai knew he was not going to be his dad. Um, but he wanted to know, he wanted his father actually to know that um, you can't just hurt my mom and get away with it. Um, uh, Chao Yun Fat and his acting ability, he basically tells his son, listen, man, I can save you. You know, I can save your life, but you got to do one thing. You got to serve your mom. This poisonous brew, whatever the fuck it is. For the rest of her life, essentially killing your mom, essentially betraying what you are as a son to her. Now, as a son that has a mother, I'm gonna tell you straight up, I, I would never do this. Um, just thinking about it would be just drives me angry. And the fact that the emperor is so bold that he just say this stuff, it's it's it just shows his ruthlessness. And it, it was, and it's a, it's a delicious scene showing his 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 apathy. For the entire situation, I don't really give a fuck about your mom. You know, I I care about you though. Like you, you are the good son. I'm willing, despite everything that you all you all your fuck ups. I'm deciding to let all this slide. If you're willing to do one thing for me, one thing that you could possibly never do. And in the film, uh, Prince Jai knew. Listen, he apologized to his mom after hearing this. He apologized for being a failure, and. With a quick move, he spots a soldier's blade, he takes a blade, and he just checks himself out with it. And it's it's truly sad. This flips out the Empress, and the final scene is basically her taking a final cup of the medicine and screaming and throwing it in the air as the contents of it land on the emblem of the family house. And the contents are corrosive and acidic, and they just erode the, the family crest. And the film ends from there. And like I said, I've seen a lot of wuxia films that I didn't even know were wuxia films back in the day. And this is by and far one of the best films I've seen. Now, this film didn't win Film of the Year back in 2006. I believe that film was Crash. And Crash is a great film and all, but I have not rewatched Crash in the... 10, 15 plus years this 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 has been out. Um now your mileage may vary with Crash. That's cool, but like I mean, just look at this film. I mean, it's a beautiful film. And it should have won something um at the Academy. But I don't, I don't think it was nominated at all. Um if you want to catch this film, feel free to watch it on Tubi. It's free. Um, again, this is not a sponsored video, so don't worry. Um, but yeah, like, give yourself some time with it. Um, if you like 
Shakespearean tragedies, if you like Greek tragedies, this is right up your alley. Um, and it has a sp splash of romance and intrigue and all types of stuff. But um, that's all I got. Like, uh, if you like this video, if you like what you had to say, what I had to say, feel free to give it a like, share, leave a comment. I greatly appreciate it. I just want to say to everybody, thank you all for the support over the last couple of days. Um, I've got a lot of comments um, and people have been checking out my videos and I really appreciate it. It's just driving me on, inspiring me to continue this on uh, that I'm on the right track. So I thank you all so much for, for watching and um, I'll catch you all on the flip side. All right. Cabs out. Thank you.